Good morning, hello and welcome to a day in my life. So my mornings traditionally start out by either taking on client calls or putting out fires. Uh, but one thing it never starts without is a coffee. So I'm here with one of my close friends, Alex, Theo Harris. My man right here has literally scaled a huge, you know, I would say seven plus figure business valuation. Yeah. Alex and I have been friends for probably six, seven plus years, and he has grown this into now two brick and mortar locations that absolutely crush it. So how did you develop the concept, stuff like that? I started off, you know, in the restaurant business. I worked for my father and my uncles for many years. I learned the ins and outs of every type of restaurant business. So coffee was a huge passion of mine, so I wanted to do this, this coffee concept. So when this guy closed, um, I took over the store and you know, I made my own company and, and, and grew it from there. Yeah. So there were months where they were tough and obviously me being an employee, had I had another employee that I was paying instead of me working in the business, I probably would have been less profitable for a longer period of time. Yeah. So I kind of, it was a double, double-edged sword in the way that like I had to work, but like also I saved money from an employee standpoint, yeah. right? Yes, there were months that I lost or broke even, but I don't see it as only a monetary cost. Mm -hmm. I see it uh, as a gain for me to learn the education and yeah. experience so that I could teach future employees so that we would never lose again. Obviously built up a book of business to where it can run sustainably, cre create some cash flow and revenue yeah. to where I can hire other people and then I could focus on shifting my attention to working on the business. With the system I created, I worked on working on the business so that I can further scale. I definitely made sure that I was able to run it in a way that we had some cushion, but I knew that because we're a linear brick and mortar business yeah. that I had to run it efficiently. But the systems and processes are there to where it doesn't have to rely on people yeah. as much as it did when I first opened. For sure, for so sure. I've created enough systems and processes to where people can come and go, but the processes stay the same. It's made the, the process of running these businesses yeah. more predictable for sure. um, and less taxing. Yeah. We've got the ground up cold brew right here, a little quick one. Shout out Alex, got to support the local businesses and the homies, matches the car. Tell me a little bit about the space before you took it over and kind of how it came to be what it is today. We did a huge pre-sale, had a huge interest, sold like 300 memberships the day we opened to going dry for almost a year and everyone thinking we were crooks and then we died. And then when we opened, no one believed it. As we started to build trust and started to build up clientele and, yeah. and, and build up you know, our draft, the last third and fourth quarter I did 1.4 million. Wow, that's <laughs> and awesome. And then you know, the second year then we did like two and a half million. And wow. That's amazing. We're just continuing to grow from there. And we're starting to build big momentum. We're catching up on bills. We're finally almost able to sustain yeah. COVID. Takes your legs out. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. And pre-COVID, we didn't have what I always envisioned. When the restrictions were lifted and we were able to just like get let 25 people in, yeah. it was weird that the clientele that came in here, it came to be everything I wanted it to be. What's like an amazing month for a gym? An amazing bedroom? month is having enough memberships. Yeah versus cancels. If we do 100 memberships and have 30 cancels, we're doing good. At $100 a membership and you had 500 members, it's 50,000 a month. Yeah. Your overhead doesn't really change much. Relationships, business, it's all the same. It's yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, everything in life is like business, you know, in a way. And you get out what you put in. The business that I want to be in is this. Yeah. And I'd love to scale this. Yeah, I want yeah. this to be my legacy. All right, you guys just wrapped up the sick interview and workout at Mode. Now we are going to go continue on the day. Let's go. All right, so a little studio breakdown here. As you guys can see, this is the main workstation area. We've got my MacBook Pro, We've got the a7 III, Sony. This is kind of my old backup camera I ended up using for filming because I don't really do anything crazy with it. It's just a main shot. We've got a little monitor right here to test everything. And then right here you can see we've got the softbox. I like when things are uncluttered and out of the way, even though I like a lot of are and knickknacks. So everything I have here, I never take away. And here, this is a full on plug and play system. Whenever I have an idea, whenever I need to film an ad, whenever I need to film some kind of a creative or hopefully more YouTube videos, uh, I can do that really quickly. But you might be wondering, how do you turn on this whole entire setup? Well, number one, I have the Alexa command to turn on this whole entire place that turns on the lighting, the LEDs and all that good stuff. That's all hands off. But when I wanna film a video, I've got everything on a switch that's right underneath the desk 
right here. So essentially when I click the switch, the monitor will turn on, the camera will turn on. That's all set up. I pull this down right here and I'm essentially good to start recording right there. All right, so right here, we've got a gift I got for my birthday this year, kind of hinting at something that will eventually come to the channel one day. Not quite yet, but soon enough, soon enough. Right here, my brother got this for me. I'll put the link of the guy right here. I forgot his name, but that's all hand painted, which is super, super cool. These are some LED bars I've got right here on both sides, kind of helps, and then a little good vibes uh, LED right there. Got my degree right there, you know, $80,000 of beauty right there. Yeah, great. Helping me make so much money. Just kidding, college degrees don't really matter, but whatever, it is what it is. BMW Emma is also another gift. Bunch of books here. Right here, we've got the little Shopify sales counter. It's kind of a passive uh, income project, so that's definitely nice to know that I'm not hustling and bustling every day. So this office is very purpose built. You know, I still have some improvements I wanna do, but I've got essentially everything I need here. Whether I need to film something, whether I need to print something, whether I need to read something, whether I need to watch something, whether I need to write something down. If, and if I get in here with a huge coffee and a huge water and I just lock myself in here for a few hours, I can be more productive than I feel like I could be in an eight to 12 hour day doing anything else. Because my problem was before, I would literally spend all day hustling and bustling and working. But when I'm here, I really try and focus on just being present in the business because anything that I do as a leader and as a business owner is going to help propel everyone else forward towards success and that's really the plan right getting organized staying on top of things and being aware and not only that but building out the things that are necessary for the team to succeed and excel and keep moving forward and really making things happen I've lived in this building for about four years I think I moved here in 2018 the summer of 2018 so going on five years actually uh, I had a one bedroom and I got the two bedroom and my goal with the two bedroom was to make it something like this. So as I mentioned, I've been in this building for about five years. So this is the first uh, more luxury building I would say in West Loop. Uh, it was built in 2016. And you know, I've always had kind of a uh, love for this building and you could see why. I've thrown a bunch of parties here over the years, birthdays, Christmas parties, like Litmus, which I have every single year and uh, never gets old. Uh, it's fun to be able to share this with other people and friends. We've got the Sears Tower right there. We've got literally the whole loop right in front of us. Uh, this building right here has got this opening, which is pretty cool. So when you're inside, you're kind of technically outside, which is nice. Uh, got a nice little entertaining area. We'll throw up some pictures of my 26th birthday party. Actually, we'll add the video in because, you know, we had that video. Shout out Kyle from Yam Media for filming that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, so unlike right now where I'm today, uh, just telling Oliver behind the camera, I'm 20 days sober, no drinking, uh, just because, you know, I've been focusing on the next level of work and, you know, kind of going in straight up monk mode and I've been loving it. So there's gonna be a time and place for, you know, renting this space out again, but that time and place is not today.